Thank you for clicking on this video. In the studio today, I have a GNL Tribute Series Fallout Bass. This bass sounds huge. Let's check it out. Now I've been wanting to check out one of these basses ever since they were released, and I had a few viewer requests asking what I thought of it. So I finally got my hands on a GNL Tribute Series Fallout Bass. This is their version of a 30 inch scale short scale bass. This bass features a poplar body, a maple neck, and depending on the color you want, uh, you get a choice between a rosewood fingerboard or a maple fingerboard. So looking at the website, if you want the white one, which is what I have here, or the black one, you can get that with a rosewood board. But if you want the candy apple red or the surf green, those come with a maple fingerboard. These bases come with a gigantic GNL proprietary MFD humbucker pickup. Uh, it's a completely passive electronic package with volume and tone. And this is a selector switch. And in the position closest to the neck, you have this humbucker wired in parallel. So both coils working together. In the middle position, it's now in single coil mode. So you do get some single coil hum. And in the bridge position, this is what they call the OMG or the oh my god position. And how this works is this humbucker is now in series, but there's a bit of a catch. They have a different capacitor that's only wired to one of the coils. So you get this gigantic, beefy, lots of bass, but a muted high end uh, with less treble. This gigantic humbucker sound uh, in the OMG or oh my god mode. Let's hear some of the sounds we can get from this bass. Let's start with the humbucker in parallel mode. So the switch in the neck position, the volume all the way up and the tone all the way down. Let's roll the tone up up to about 50%. Parallel mode. Let's open that tone knob wide open. Now let's put the switch in the middle position so that it's single coil. And I'm not sure if you will be able to hear this over YouTube audio, but there is a little bit of ground hum, not a lot. For a single coil mode, it's considerably quieter than some of the other bases that I've tried that have this type of switching. Let's start with the volume all the way up again, tone up all the way down in single coil mode. So even with the tone knob rolled all the way down, it is quite a bit cleaner uh, and s smaller sounding than the pickup in parallel mode. Let's increase the tone knob to 50%, single coil mode. Let's open the tone all the way open, single coil mode. So there is less beef and a little, uh, it's a thinner low end sound 
which could be very useful if you need to cut through a very dense mix or if you need a little more clarity to your sound. Now, let's put it to OMG mode. Volume all the way up. Let's roll the tone up all the way down. Now, there is going to be a considerable volume boost here. So, here we go. Wow, that sounds big and woolly. That sounds huge. It almost has a bit of that Gibson EBO type character. Let's roll the tone up up to 50 in OMG mode. Now let's roll the tone all the way open in OMG mode. So even with the tone knob wide open, you can really hear that second capacitor in play. It's quite a bit of a dampened muted high end in OMG mode. Now, let's hear this bass in the context of a drum track and see how these different sounds blend in with the drums. For this comparison, in the first half, we're going to have the bass with the tone knob at 50% and we're going to toggle through the different pickup selector switches. So in the first one with the tone knob at 50, we'll have it in parallel. Second one, single coil, third one in OMG. And then we're open the tone knob all the way up to 100 and we'll do the same thing. Now, because the human ear does tend to favor louder sounds and we, we tend to think louder sounds better a lot of the time, I will level match these in post. But otherwise, the bass has gone through the identical recording chain, same settings, uh, same cable. And the only thing I've done is level match them for volume. Here we go.
Please let me know what you thought of the sounds by leaving a comment below. I hope you enjoyed that playing example. This bass sounds huge. Now let me start with the things I like about this bass. In terms of construction and fit and finish, for the asking price of 850 Canadian dollars, this bass is solidly made. The neck pocket is tight. The construction uh, is very smooth. It's very well finished. Uh, and having played American-made uh, GNLs before, I will say th there is a difference. The American custom shop uh, instruments do feel a little more upscale, and the type of finish they use on their necks feels a little more upscale. Um, however, for 850 Canadian dollars, fit and finish is very, very good. Another thing I like about this bass is this huge sound. So if you are looking for a bass that will really cut through and carry its weight and kind of heavier or louder, denser type music, this could be the bass for you. Now let's talk about some of the things I don't quite like about this bass or I think could be improved upon. The first one is gonna be the weight. Now this bass, come, this particular one, uh, comes in at eight pounds and 11 ounces. So it's just shy of nine pounds. And for a short scale, 30 inch scale instrument, it is on the heavier side. It does have a tendency to go down. If you compare this to a PJ Fender Mustang, if I put the red bass right in front of the GNL, you will see the, the body is slightly longer and slightly wider, but not significantly so. And of course it is kind of, the body shape is Mustang inspired. But if you put the two bridge points together, you will notice that the bridge is mounted in a different place on the GNL. And as a result, it's, a, it's further towards the neck. So that does, give everything more of a kind of a neck favored balance which depending on your physique uh, might feel a little neck heavy for you so the mustang is, is a the bridge is further back towards the butt of the body now in terms of not the scale length but the actual overall length of the instrument here is a full-size scale precision base and i put both on the floor here so the GNL short scale base is only a few inches shorter than a full size 34 inch scale P base. So if you are looking for a lightweight, easy to handle uh, short scale base, then purely from a, uh, a physique and measurements point of view, this base is on the big and bulky side. Now, a second thing I don't like about this bass uh, has to do with the pickup and, and the electronics. Now, this is a very GNL thing. And 20 years ago, so kind of circa 2004, I had my first GNL, uh, I'll put up a photo here. I had an L2500. So it was a dual pickup uh, five string. Now, that bass also sounded huge. And as I understand it, it has the same MFD pickups. That one just had two of them. And my complaint with that bass at the time was it was really heavy. That was about a 10 pound bass, it was huge. But the, the tone, it almost sounded like it was just afterburners on all the time. And it was just loud and in your face all the time. And my biggest criticism of my L2500 was it didn't do subtle very well. It didn't do soft very well. That bass, and this bass both sound a little more compressed with a smaller dynamic range uh, than what I would like. So same critique here for the fallout bass. This bass does loud and in your face really, really well. This bass sounds absolutely huge and thunderous. But as I tried to demonstrate in that playing example, if you try to play a little softer up here uh, over the fingerboard, it still has that kind of in your face sound and it doesn't do soft and subtle particularly well. And I think that just comes down to, this is a incredibly hot pickup. This is louder than all of my other uh, basses. Now, if you just need a in your face type bass, this is it. 
Uh, but if you're looking for something that has a little more tonal variation and dynamics, this may not be it. Overall, I think that is a solid bass and it sounds absolutely thunderous. I think having the ability to switch between parallel, single and OMG mode is very helpful. For me, I find the OMG mode a little bit too over the top, a little too uh, thunderous uh, for what I do and how I typically uh, set my amps. Uh, I think being able to go to single coil and kind of clean things up and, and thin out some of the low end of it is very, very helpful if you need a little more clarity. But 850 Canadian dollars, this is one of the biggest sounding short scale basses I've ever played. And I think, although I haven't tried, I think this bass will handle drop D tuning and down tuning to E flat standard or D standard really, really well, just given how thunderous it sounds in E standard. Let me know if you think that would be a good, interesting video idea. Well, thanks so much for watching this video about the GNL Fallout bass. Catch you next time.